Welcome back everyone to more gameplay of Farming Simulator 22. Today we are on the Ottenberg map. Now I did a recent spotlight video on this map going over some of the details and I did mention in there that I have been doing a little bit of gameplay here on the map and uh, I wanted to show you guys what I've been up to. It's some very basic gameplay, uh, nothing too intricate, but it gave me a great opportunity because of the layout and the design and the size of the map overall to really focus on a different aspect than what we've had an opportunity to do in our gameplay so far. So right now we are actually working grass. I have the AI who is up ahead of me and we'll go through all of this here in just a moment. But first thing I wanna do is reach 100% fill on our uh, wagon here, our forage wagon. We are almost there, we're at 93%. So this is one task I cannot assign to the AI, uh, at least not without course play or some similar type mod. Is there ahead you can see our huge crone mower. And right over here, so essentially right now I own one field and it's the field that we're on right now, field number two. Uh, as far as the fields I'm working, I'll show you some of the other fields that we actually own here on the map in a bit. But this is the only field I'm actually working and we are growing grass. We bring it over here. This is a mod. It is a silage silo. And you can see it's got the two areas. Looks very similar to the silo that's already here on the map that I showed you guys in the spotlight video. But this one, you can bring hay or grass in and it will convert it into silage uh, over a period of time. So that's exactly what I've got this thing doing right now, it is part of my production chain. And from there, once it has been converted to silage, it is being distributed over to the biogas facility where it is then used to create energy and digestate and all that wonderful type of stuff. But again, right now we're only working this one field uh, but here is our huge crone mower. It is absolutely my favorite thing in the world to use when cutting grass, uh, simply because I just like to watch it in action. You can certainly get the attachments, the mowing attachments, and use a standard tractor for this. But uh, to me, there is nothing that compares with the huge crone mower. All right, so let's get this bad boy parked before we head back out onto the field and grab some more of that wonderful grass that we are then going to convert into silage. All right, so let's get this bad boy parked under here. All right, so we're in June right now, and there we go. So let's hop out and take a quick look at the map. Again, here is the map for Ottenberg. What we own right now is all of this in the center, which as I talked about in the spotlight video, all of this is very cheap. You're going to get this for $12,500. So $12,500 for that. I went ahead and picked up an additional field here just so that I could have all of the land surrounding the, the central farm. It was only $115,000. Remember, when I play in farm manager mode, I start with $1.5 million. Then I sold off the starting equipment for roughly another five hundred grand. That puts me at about $2 million. Uh, and then I use some of the additional proceeds to purchase field number two. And then my plan is to pick up some of these additional fields as we continue to grow. Now, field number one, before we get back to uh, working this field, picking up the grass and bringing it over to the silage silo, which by the way, looks amazing. Now I know this is not a, an original design by the mod creator, uh, but it is an amazing look for that type of silo. And I love the input output uh, layout. I just wish it was maybe a touch bigger. Uh, a little bit more room in there might be nice. But other than that, it looks amazing. Now here is the biogas. I have uh, a biogas mod that I was able to use. I had some sort of an issue here in the game. I'm not sure if it was game related or uh, if it was related to the map itself, but I had initially, if we come back out to the map, I had come over and I had bought 
the biogas facility with part of my initial proceeds, the roughly $2 million that I started with. I had come over here and I had bought this. Well, somehow when I exited the game, came back in, I no longer owned this and my money was gone. So at first I thought, well, maybe I just bought it, forgot to save the game, exited, and then, you know, no harm done. I just come back in and repurchase it. But the money was gone and I still didn't own it. So what I did is I found a mod that is a biogas facility. It's actually a little bit larger as far as the capacity. Instead of the standard 500 kilowatt, um, which is the, the biggest, I believe, available by default in the game, this is a one megawatt, so twice that size. And my absolute favorite reason for owning this is notice that you can drop off the silage here through the ground. No more having to worry about some elaborate scheme to get uh, belts up into the drop off and all that kind of thing. You don't have to worry about that with this mod. So that is why I love it. Now for our purposes, I really don't have to use it very much at all because if we come in and take a look at our production chain, here is our silage factory. It actually has four different parts, but it's broken apart into two pieces essentially. So we've got our grass that comes in and these two pieces. The first one, the first area will make 2,000 silage per hour from 2,000 grass. So a one to one there, but it operates at one cycle per hour at 15 bucks per hour. This one does the exact same thing, but the performance is beefed up. Now it's 5,000 per hour for $50 per hour. So it just gives you the ability to ramp up production at an increased cost. In fact, I wish we could do it even more than that. But that's how it works. And then from there, the silage, you can see it is being distributed over to the BGA or the biogas facility where 8,484 silage can be turned into the byproducts, digestate, power, and so on over at the BGA. Uh, and again, this if you're wondering why this is a bit of a weird number here instead of some easy round number like we saw up here with the silage factory, it's because this is a multiple of 10 over the baseline biogas facility that's available in game. Uh, so if you look up the 99 kilowatt uh, that is available in game, in fact, let's just go ahead and do that right now. We'll come into the storefront under construction. And then if we go to production and factories, here you can see your three main ones. We've got a 500 kilowatt, a 250 kilowatt, and then finally the 99. The 99 is the one that has been used and just simply multiplied that by 10 because the output is by 10. Everything else is exactly uh, the same. So I love this biogas facility and I have plenty of room here to expand production. This one can produce quite a bit uh, on its own, uh, quite a bit of money that we can make here using it, but I want to expand. Now, as time goes on, my ultimate plan is to also bring cows in on this map. So I want to continue expanding the operation, and of course that's going to ultimately mean more fields and more money, but along with that, I also want to bring in some cows and that's what I'm going to use another of the fields in here for. So if we bring up, in fact, let me go ahead and just bring up the key. So obviously field one is where we have the BGA or the biogas facility right now. But if you look at the field just below that or diagonal to it, now those are not actually numbered, but they're both grass fields. That is where I plan on putting the cows and then I'll simply use the fields that we uh, purchase along the way to uh, grow the grass. We'll convert that into hay or silage and so on as we go along from there. But this map is exactly perfect for what I wanted to do and what I wanted to test out here. Now long term, I'm still looking for a larger map, more of a maybe a 4x style map that has some bigger fields squared off uh, because Ultimately, I'd like to be able to do a lot of different things on a single map, but with this, uh, this size of a map, I can really only do 
to the standard that I would like to do it, maybe one or two things. And here I'm thinking that I want to use this for uh, the BGA as well as the cows. But long term, uh, a bigger map that I'd like to do a lot more with it. But right here, uh, you can see we're, again, we're in June. And this grass grows uh, roughly every four days. I believe is when you can harvest it to get the maximum yield uh, because as soon as I get done with this I will bring the sprayer out and I will fertilize to make sure we get a hundred percent yield out of this uh, particular field and it gets me quite a bit of grass in fact once we get to the end here I'll show you guys what the uh, revenue stream is looking like so far here on this map it has taken me a bit to get this thing going with a few kinks uh, coming in here and there uh, but for the most part it has been lots of fun the map itself is fairly small and that works out perfect for what I wanted to do all right so let's go ahead and pull up the income stream so we're looking here and of course you're gonna see a lot of negative numbers here uh, because let's see where is it that we're getting our oh seriously is this gonna be the first it is going to be the first. Okay, so what happened, and I had actually forgotten about this. What happened is I, last November, right before winter time, I came out and I harvested the grass, just the same as what we're doing right now. Well, what happened is over the winter time, so for those three months of December, January, and February, we got no growth on this field at all. So when we, when we got to March, it started fresh just as if I had uh, just mown the grass in March. So it took a little bit of extra time. So this is actually our first time mowing the grass here in this calendar year. So that's why you see a lot of the minuses in there. Oh, we've just got done. So let's go over here and drop this off. And then we'll come back for some more. So the... The trailer we're using, or the, the the forage wagon we're using for this is one that I like quite a bit. It is the Bergman style. If we take a look at this here in the storefront, so we're going to come down. Okay, so we've got our implements and tools up here. We've got, uh, let's see, how far down do we got? There we go, forage wagons. And then we simply scroll over. And this is the one we have, the Bergman style, which again, just I happen to like the look of it. And it has a very nice uh, capacity to it, which you've had an oppor opportunity to see so far as we've been working. Now, one thing I will admit that I don't yet know what this does, and I have not had a chance to really look it up, and that is the silage additive tank. If we add that on the front, which I did for mine, you notice right in here, it's going to add some what appears to be some electronics. And when we hop back out, you'll notice that in the bottom right hand corner, of course, we have our fill percentage at the very bottom, which right now is at uh, zero. All right, let's go ahead and get this bad boy back up and running. So essentially what I do is once I get the pickup in place, uh, then I turn on the loading wagon, then I just simply put it in cruise control so that I can just steer a little bit and it's pretty much going on its own. This is as close as I can get to AI functionality right now with this particular function on the field. Uh, but you notice right above the field percentage, which right now is at 7% grass, there is another field percentage which appears to me to be fertilizer. Uh, but I was unable to fill it with fertilizer when I tried. So I'm not exactly sure what that does, but I am very interested because this is the first time I have noticed this uh, to this point in the game. So I am very curious about what this does. So I'm sure some of you guys know and probably already use that functionality, but for me, I am just now catching on. I'm a little bit behind on this one because I'm used to just using the forage wagon as a way to pick up the grass and no more. So very interested on that. Now, as far as going back to the map here, 
Um, I love this field. Of course, it's, it's proximity to the main farm area combined with its cost uh, was the reason why I started with this one. But one of the few, I guess you could say, not really a gripe, but the few negatives that I have about this is there's a lot of trees in all the wrong spots. So you could see, just as we were trying to turn around, there are trees right in between the two fields that very much get in the way as you're working the fields. And the same thing happens when you're working in around the uh, main farm area. They block the view, they block your travel path, and that kind of thing. So I've got some forestry to do if uh, I want to help out with that. But yeah, some very strategically placed trees, it would appear, in exactly the wrong areas to make uh, to make it to where I can freely move in and about the map uh, without having to worry about getting stuck on some trees. Because remember, it's not just the tree trunk you're trying to avoid, it's the branches as well. Because I have gotten this particular trailer stuck on one of the tree branches. We missed the trunk, but we got stuck on one of the branches. And so that was a bit of a pain. But other than that, really enjoying this map and as we move forward and as I find more maps I'm constantly looking for more maps uh, to play in any of them that uh, catch my eye and look like they could be fun for a specific uh, gameplay element I'll be picking those up and we'll be doing videos just like the spotlight video as well as what we're doing here today and I'll bring you guys back to this particular map on different occasions and show you guys my progress but we haven't dropped our uh, initial map the US map that comes with the game so Elm was it Elm Creek I believe the name of it I've been looking at so many different names I'm beginning it's all starting to run together in my head but Elm Creek I believe is the American map by default in FS 22 All right, there we go. So you can see, very easy work for the grass. Then we take it to the silage silo. And of course, another great thing about the silage silo, where were we? I've done lost track of where we were. I believe we were right over here somewhere. We got a few more rows left uh, before we're done. I think we were on this row right here. Yeah, there we are. You can see the the draw distance is a circle and it is a bit too short for my taste but uh, it keeps everything working smoothly so I guess we'll go with it but if you're familiar with the farming sim franchise this has been a thing forever that circular uh, field of view around your character or your tractor as the case may be but yeah take a look at these trees that we're headed right toward I mean, just strategically placed, just so that it get, they get in the way as you're trying to turn around. This is one of those times where the map creator was like, these look really nice, and they'll give them something else to do because they'll have to get rid of all these trees when they want to start combining fields and or working with some of the bigger machinery that might have some issues trying to get through these tight spaces. Now, for their part, the AI, for the most part, they just ignore it. Uh, they just ignore it, and by ignoring it, I mean they just don't get close to it. Uh, they just look at it. It's almost like the AI take one look at it and say, nope, I'm not getting anywhere close to that. Uh, the fertilizer, when the AI is spreading that, they don't go anywhere close to the end. So we miss uh, a, a small portion of the field just because they don't want to mess with it, <laughs> which I can understand. I can appreciate that from the AI's perspective. All right, so you can see, when you have a fully fertilized field, it does not take long to fill up these forage wagons. Not long at all. We're almost at 50% again, and we just emptied it out not very long ago. And while I am thinking about it, I have to share this with you guys. Something that happened to me uh, while I was last working this particular field, uh, so uh, several months ago in game time, but of course, in real time, wasn't that long at all. But I was riding along, and on the keyboard, 
I was attempting to hit a certain key and I missed that key. I was not paying close enough attention and I hit the radio key. And the radio started blaring. Now, it has been a long, long time since I listened to the radio in Farming Simulator. Uh, because I spend most of my time recording, I'm just used to immediately turning that option off and then I never go back to it. So, it was a bit of a, sur a surprise and a shock to me. Now, fortunately, it was Metallica playing on that particular radio station, so I was quite happy with that. But uh, it was a scare nonetheless because when you are chilling out, just simply, you know, working a field like we're doing right now, and then all of a sudden you hit a button and the radio starts blaring and yes it was at full blast 100 percent volume and yeah that was a bit much i wasn't quite prepared for that so i had a good laugh about that i had to tell my oldest son about that who plays quite a bit of farming sim as well it's like yeah nothing nothing like being out in the tractor on the field just relaxing very low stress and all of a sudden metallica comes into your life at very loud volumes but again at least it was metallica that's what he told me. He said, at least it was Metallica. And so it was something that you could enjoy instead of some type of music that I didn't really want to hear. All right, so as this is emptying out, let's actually come back and take a look at our production chain. So you can see we've got 168,000 in grass. And of course, that's going to be ever increasing as we are unloading into it right now. But here you can see the silage that has been created, about five grand here. And it looks like we have... A little bit no actually we are now missing we just caught it running out of silage here at the BGA but you can tell we got a little bit of digestate I have that set up to sell because I don't really have a use for it right now uh, but I'm actually not even sure you can sell digestate I have never tried before in the game it's either been something you either avoid using uh, altogether, meaning that you just simply don't pick it up from the BGA, or I have used it as the fertilizer. So again, I'm not even sure. All right, I can't remember exactly where we are, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit the closest one, which is right here, and then we'll come back and finish up with the partial. But yeah, one of the things I absolutely love about Farming Simulator is just the stress-free environment that you have. For those of you who follow the channel, you know I do tons of sim racing, and that can get fairly high stress at certain times. And of course, some of the other games that I do, some of the other simulation type stuff, uh, can you know use up a lot of brain power and can get uh, a little stressful and uh, can take up a lot of, of time so it's really nice to have a game like Farming Sim for that stress relief. So even if you think, man, I'm not even sure I'm going to like playing a farming game. I'm not even into farming. Well, give it a shot is all I can tell you because it is a great relaxation. I mean, you can sit here and play this game for an hour and it feel like five minutes because you just lose yourself in... The, the general tasks and the mundane tasks of working the fields and it is a wonderful stress reliever. All right, let's go ahead and turn around see if we can avoid this wonderful tree which you can see it's got looks like one limb there that is just within reach so we're going to try to avoid that so we don't get hung on that and then actually I'm going to Call it a day as soon as we get done with this little piece here. Now, there's a little bit more there on the very edge of the field, but I'm actually going to leave that. And that's one of the beauties of Farming Simulator. When you're working a grass field, you can actually cut the grass and then just leave it there on the field if you want. Because whenever the grass grows, it will grow just as if that existing cut grass is not there. And whenever you get around to finally gathering the grass, it'll gather all of it. So you can cut grass two, three, four, as many times as you want. And it will all just continue to accumulate. And of course, at some point, it's going to be in the way. And you're going to have a hard time working the field. But other than that, you can just leave it there. And that is something that is very nice indeed. All right, so as we... Let's see, let's actually hop back over 
to our main field area and I'll show you guys as we finish up today we've already seen the mower now I told you guys that I absolutely love this looks like it's due for a nice washing by the way but the other thing I love about this particular mower is the fact that you can have it use a swath right down the center line and of course you guys I'm sure noticed that when we were on the field but I have not worked that field with a wind roller to get the nice swath like that that comes straight from this machine and that is a beautiful beautiful thing helps me out so much all right as far as the other equipment that I have if we hop over here I only have two other pieces of equipment that you guys haven't seen and the first one is of course our cedar this is what I use whenever I purchase a new field and we need to plant some grass on it that's what I use on field two that we've been working and then we have our fertilizer that's our fertilizer attachment and that's what we'll be using coming up next to make sure we get this field back to 100 percent fertilizing now with the calendar let's see we're in june which means that july it's going to go into the growing stage which means it'll just be a little bit of growth that you'll be able to visually see and then August will be, I believe, the first stage that is available for you to uh, harvest. But that's not the stage you want to harvest. And then I believe August. Let's see. So wait a minute. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. July will be the first stage of growth. August will be the first stage that we could actually... Okay, here's where... See this? <laughs> for those of you who are like me that are on an outside view for frames reasons yeah it gets a little dicey trying to pull into this bad boy almost it, it got to a point where I almost had to just pull in the other way just face in the other direction oops wrong way wanted to disconnect that not not hop out all right so we'll hop over and we will back in right here we'll pick up the sprayer and i'll get this guy started as we end today's video oh my goodness that was a great job of backing up i had a guess about where that attachment was and boy could i have not been more wrong now the beauty of this attachment if you're not familiar with it is as it starts to unfold you'll see it has an absolutely huge working width so it doesn't take the ai very long at all to actually work the field. Now I can't remember exactly how wide it is. So let's see. It's got one more level to widen out. Okay, so I'm gonna try. Now this is one of those implements. You can see why the AI don't even attempt to get close to the end of the field because then turning around would be a huge, huge pain. All right, so we've got it, this guy lined up. As we finish up today's video, once again, as always, thank you guys so much for joining me. Hope you guys are enjoying Farming Simulator 22 as much as I am.